Hi everybody! I'm going to walk you through how to create a very simple NHD Web Central website. So if you're a beginner or you just want to be refreshed on the different features of Web Central, we'll go through that in this video. Everything I show here can be done much more advanced, you have many more customization op options, but this is if you just want to learn the basics of how to create a website or you just want to know how to get started. So you'll see here that I have a blank canvas. Everything's white. In the middle, I have this body section, and this is where I'm going to drag and drop all of my elements to create my website. So the first thing I want to do is make it not a white background. So I'm going to go to the palette icon, and I have two choices here. I can either go through and customize what color I want my font to be, what font I want to have on my website, my colors of my background, my menu colors, I can customize all of that. But if I just want to start simple and choose a preset theme, I have these four preset themes available here. So I think I'm just going to do a preset theme. I'm going to go with the greens. Once I select it, I can scroll down here and save. You can change it at any time but this will just give you a base. You see my body is this green color and my background is this light green color. And as I add more elements, you'll see the different colors and the different fonts that that preset theme gave me. So now that I have my background ready, I wanna add a title because that is pretty important to have on your website. So I can either drag and drop text into here or I can drag and drop an H1, H2, or H3. These are different header options. I think I'm gonna choose header one because that's the size of a title. So I'm gonna drag and drop that right onto my page, double click in the text box, and I'm going to write my title. Now, I did have a preset font across all of my pages and I have my preset colors, but what if I want to change my title font? I want it to be different. I can make sure my text box is clicked, which will open up this menu of options. You can ignore everything except for font because we're working with the font of my title. So I'm going to go here to my font choices and I want mine to be in cursive, so I'm going to click this. And now it kind of seems small to me, so I want to make it even bigger. I'm going to go with 70. I like that. And you can always add or subtract size as well. And then I want it to be centered. So I'm going to go down here to text align and center it. Then I'm going to save because I made a change. Remember, NHD Web Central does not automatically save, so you'll want to click this floppy disk icon to save often. So now that I've added my title, I want to add a few different elements to my website. So when adding elements, you always want to come back to this block button and it will open up all of these different choices for you. So the next thing I want to add is a horizontal line. This will keep my title separate from the rest of the stuff on my website. And under my horizontal line, I want to add an auto nav bar. This is a super important feature. This is what will navigate your judges, your audience, any users who use your website from page to page. And the best part is you don't have to worry about linking your pages together with the auto nav bar. Every time you create a page, it will automatically appear. So we'll see that a little bit later. So you can see here I have one page so far. It's my home page. Now, the next thing I want to do is add some more elements. So I'm going to add another horizontal line so I can keep my auto nav bar separate. And the next thing I want to do is add a photo because I want to show my viewers what the centennial exhibition is on my homepage with an image. So I'm going to come here to my blocks again and I'm going to drag and drop either an image or an image and citation. And you'll see here I have a place for an image and a place to add my citation because we need to put citations with our images. So I'm going to double click here and this opens up my image library. So these are images I already have uploaded onto Web Central. But if you don't have any images up uploaded, you can just double click here to open up your file folder and select which photos you'd like to upload to Web Central. I already have one, so I'm just going to click it once and it opens up this huge image. So I can do two things. I can either take it out of Web Central and edit it, or I can shrink it right here in Web Central. I like that. Okay. And then I can add my citation. So I'm going to put the title of this and where I found it. 
Now say I want main building to be italicized. I just highlight it and I get this pop-up menu and I can click italic. So that is how I can add a photo and how I can add a caption or a citation. Now I want to add something else. So on our homepage, we know we need to have all of that required text, like our name, our category, and all of that. So I'm going to drag and drop a text box underneath my image and citation. And then I'm going to insert my name. I'm going to insert my division and category. I'm going to insert my student composed word count, my process paper word count, and my multimedia time. Now, I don't want my text to be to the left. I want it to be centered. And I also don't like that it's double spaced. So I'm going to make sure my text box is highlighted. And I'm going to go here to my font again. And I am going to go to line height. And right now it says normal. I'm going to set it to zero. And you can see it made all of my text single space. But I don't want it to the left. I want it to the center. So I'm still in font. I'm going to go to text align which centers it, then I'm going to save. And there is my centered single spaced text. And I like that. So the last thing I want to do on this page is I want to add a enter here or enter site button. That's not required, but I know a lot of students like to add those buttons at the bottom of the pages to help judges go from page to page. They can also use the auto nav bar, but I know a lot of students like to do it. So I'm going to show you how you can add a button at the bottom of your page. So we're going to go back to blocks. We're going to scroll all the way down to this flex box option. And we're going to drag and drop it underneath our text. So you can see here we have two flex boxes added. Now what that means is these boxes are flexible. You can make them bigger or smaller. I actually just want to use one of them, so I'm going to delete the other one. So I just have one column now that's flexible. So now I'm going to go back to my blocks scroll to link block, drag and drop it in. And now I have this little button that will link me to my next page. But I don't want it to say link block. So I'm going to highlight the text. I'm going to say enter here. And I think I want my font to be, mm, I guess I'll stick with that font. All right. So then I don't want it to be to the left. I want it to be centered. So again, we're going to go to font, text align, and center it. And then click save. Now we have to link it, so I have to click my little link button, and this will allow me to choose a different page on my website to hyperlink this button to. But I only have one page now, so once I have additional pages, I can go in and link this button to another page on my website and save and close. Make sure you do that before you submit your project. Make sure all of your buttons and your links work, uh, just so your judges aren't confused or your audience isn't confused where to go. And then I'm going to click Save. And that is my home page. So now I want to add another page. So to do that, I'm going to go up to my page manager. It says page next to it. Drag the drop down menu. You're going to click open manage pages. And I'm going to create a new page. So I'm going to call this page historical context. Now, my page name is what the computer needs, the program needs. This title is what your audience will see and what will be in your auto nav bar. You can choose a template. These are just various templates that you can use for your pages, or you can duplicate a previously created page. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to duplicate my home page. Then I'm going to click add page. Next and most important, save, refresh, and you can see that historical context has been added to my auto nav bar. So I'm going to go up to my page manager and go to historical context. And look, it looks exactly the same because remember, I made a copy of this page. So what I'm going to do is just delete the elements that I don't need on here because I just copied it from my first page. But I'm going to keep the title at the top because I like that. And I'm going to keep my auto nav bar. And now I'm going to go to my blocks. I'm going to add some, some elements here. I'm going to try another flex box, which puts those two columns next to each other. And remember, they're flexible, so you can move them however big or small you want them to be. Then I'm going to go back to my blocks, and I'm going to add in a 
image. And I'm going to choose this image from my folder. But remember, it's huge, so I can shrink it down to size, or I can take it out of the website builder, edit it, and re-upload it. And then I want to add some historical context text. So I'm going to take my text box, and I'm going to drag and drop it. So I'm going to drag and drop some text into that box. Boop. And then I can type in, or I can copy and paste text that I've already written here. And I can type away to my heart's content. And if I want to make my font size any bigger or smaller, I just go right here to make sure my text box is highlighted first. Go to font, and I can change my font. I can change the font size, the color. I have all these different options here if I want. If not, it's preset because I just selected a preset theme, so it'll look like this. Anytime I add anything, I'm clicking save. Now what's wrong with this picture? I forgot to add a photo citation, but don't worry, you can do it later. Just go back to your blocks, drag and drop text right underneath your photo, and then you can insert your text and put in your citation. But look at it again, it's to the left, and I like to keep mine justified to the center. So I'm making sure my text box is highlighted, going to font, centering and then I'm going to save. Now say I want to add some multimedia to my website. Let me go back to my blocks, scroll down with a flex box, put it right under my other flex box, and then I want to add some multimedia into those two columns. So the first thing I'm going to do is drag and drop this embed multimedia into one of the columns. And then it says double click. So I'm going to double click, which opens up my file library. So again, if you don't have your files uploaded, you can click here to open up your computer's file manager. If you already have them uploaded, they'll appear here. So I already have my sound and my video uploaded. So I'm going to click once, and it'll appear right here on the page. And I want to make it small, because remember, I'm using my Flexbox, so I'm flexible with how big and how small I want it. So I have my flex box here. I'm going to make it this size. Now the next thing I want to do is add some songs. So I'm going to go back to my embed multimedia, drag and drop into my other flex box, double click, and open up my mp3 file, which has my sound in it. And it'll create something that looks like this. But that looks bad because it's kind of going off the page. So remember, I can shrink it to fit. And then I'm going to click save because I made a change. So that's how you can upload a video or you can upload a sound. So for videos, you need to upload MP4 files. For sound files, you need to upload MP3 files. And then always save once you've done that. Now the next thing I want to show you is how to create link blocks to other pages. So some students like to do this. Again, this is not required. But if you would like to add a link blocks to show, tell your judges to go to the next page or go to the previous page, I would recommend doing another flex box underneath your multimedia. So it'll look something like this, two columns again. Then we're going to go back to our blocks. Boop, and we are going to select link blocks, drag and drop them. This time we'll need two. So we don't want it to say link block, we want it to say previous, and we want it to say next. And then I want this one to be to the right. So I'm going to make sure my box is selected and then I'm going to align it to the right. This one I like to the left. And then I'm going to click save. Oops, I accidentally changed the font color. So I'm going to change it to white. I'm going to change it to white and save. And then you have to make sure you link your blocks to the pages you want. So I want to link this to my home page. This one I can't link yet because I only have two pages on my website. But once I have more pages, I can click that hyperlink button, select what page I want to link it to, and save and close. And then I'm saving again. And that is how you add link blocks if you want to have judges click buttons to go to the next page or the previous page. But remember, your judges can also use your navigation bar. Next, I'm going to show you how to add a page for your process paper and your annotated bibliography. So the first thing we'll need to do is go to our page manager, 
open manage pages and create a new page. So I'm going to call this my research page. And then I'm going to add research again. So remember the page name is what the Web Central will call it. Title is what will appear on your auto navigation bar. So you can make them different if you'd like. I don't want to use a template. I don't want to duplicate a page. So I'm just going to say add page. And then I'm going to save and then I'm going to refresh. And once I refresh, my new page will now appear in the auto nav bar. But wait, what is this more? I don't know if I want that. So if I don't want that, I just double click my auto nav bar, which opens up the nav bar editor. And I can drag and drop where I want to put my research. So I'm going to drag and drop it down here. And this more, I'm going to remove it. Then I'm going to click save, close, refresh, And now I have my circle, context, and research, and I got rid of that more option. That will happen if you create a certain number of pages. It'll pull up that more feature. If you don't want it, you can just double, double click onto your nav bar and open up the nav editor and edit here. Now I am going to go to my research page. After I save, <laughs> go to my research page. So it looks something like this. Now, if I want to add my title like I had on my other pages, I can drag and drop text, and then I can drag and drop my auto nav bar like I had on my other pages, and it will automatically populate. I won't have to do anything to it. Ooh, if I make a mistake, I can just click undo. There we go. And I want my title to be across this page too, so I'm going to put it up here. And like with my other pages, I'm going to make sure my text box is highlighted, go to font, make it the same size and font and color as my other pages, align it to the center, and save. Then I'm going to go back to my blocks and I am going to go down to the flex box, drag and drop, and I have these two columns, and I'm going to upload my process paper and bibliography. So I'm actually going to delete one of the columns just so I have one big column to work in, and I'm going to go to my blocks, and I'm going to go to embed multimedia, drag and drop it right into this box, double click, and I can either upload my files from my computer by double clicking here, or if I already have them uploaded, I can access them here by clicking once. And then I have my element. So I can double click once to select element. If I want to center it or move it to the side, I can do that. Um, or I can just make it bigger like that, which is I think what I think I'm gonna do. And then I am going to save. And then I'm going to go to my blocks and I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to add another flex box underneath this one. And again, I'm going to delete one of the columns because I only want one. Go to my blocks, drag and drop another multimedia, double click, find my annotated bibliography or upload it. And then I'm going to do the same thing, click once and I'm going to make it the same size. And there we go. Maybe I'll make this one a bit smaller. There we go. And you can change the alignment of these. You can do it however you'd like, but that's how I want to do it. Then I'm going to save and that is how you upload your process paper and annotated bibliography, how you embed them right into your website. You can, of course, do them differently than I did, but that's how you go to your blocks and use the embed multimedia tool to upload your process paper and bibliography. And as always, don't forget to save when you're done.